Peace fight for the loose ball, saves it. Mason Archie able to track it down. And Archie will scoop it up and in. And Shot clock at one, got to go up. Count it. And it's got to <laughs> go in. That kind of night wow. for Mason Archie. Clarksdale goes right by Erickson, goes right over Meyer, and they'll go right to the free throw line. Archie. The finish. Nice look. How about a taste of their own medicine? Backdoor cut by Barksdale. He's got to go up. Finds Brennan. Catch, shoot, no. Barksdale, yes. <laughs> it's been that type of day for IUPUI. Yeah. I think my my favorite memory um, came this year. Um, you know, hitting the, the buzzer beater at IPFW on the road to kind of give us a, a big win. You know, I'll probably never forget that. So that was that was definitely a memorable experience. Well, it had to be our game last year against Ball State. You know, that was a, good, a, a big game for us. We came back, uh, you know, it was a back and forth type of game. And, uh, you know, I had a really good game. My teammates were really, really buckled down defensively. And at the end of the game, PJ hit that big that big shot. It was a floater. Um, you know, it was a, it was a big time shot. We needed it. Uh, we had just come, out, come off of a, a, a slight losing streak. So we really needed that. And it was really a, a uplifter for us. Uh, funniest guy on the team, definitely. I think we both agree with this. Probably, probably DJ. <laughs> yeah, DJ is definitely the silliest guy on the team. He always has something funny to say. He always uh, he can crack jokes at any moment. So I mean, he always has us cracking up about all kind of stuff. He make he makes videos of you know coaches, players, uh, himself. He's just a real goofball. Most behind that though is definitely probably Jordan Pickett. He does a he probably impersonates Coach Gardner better than Coach Gardner does Coach Gardner. Yeah, and Coach Banks too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'll, I'll probably have to say yeah, it's, it's close. It might really be a tie. Really now think, now about I think about it. It, <laughs> it is kind of Pickett and uh yeah. and DJ. I'm a I'm a really big LeBron James fan. Uh, real cliche, but uh, you know I like LeBron and everything about him. What he stands for. He's a family guy. Seems like and a real smart business person. So uh, you know I really I really don't just admire what he does on the court. But I really enjoy what he does off the court for kids for uh, his family in general. Uh, I'm definitely a, a Laker fan. The last few years haven't been too good for us. <laughs> but uh, I mean, Kobe's my favorite player. But um, you know, it's been good to you know, kind of see him get sent off the right way. But uh, you know, I think he might, might have a little something left in the tank. Uh, my biggest role model would probably be my parents, for sure. Uh, you know, uh, growing up, they, they, they really believed in me as far as basketball, education, anything. Uh, their, you know, their work ethic has really rubbed off on me. You know me, I'm the same type of way. You know, my parents, uh, my mom, uh, you know, really big influence in my life. Really just encouraged us from an early age to, to dream big and, uh, you know, really make those dreams a reality. And then my dad passed away when I was 12. But, uh, you know, even in those 12 years, you know, he still was able to teach us, you know, my siblings included, uh, life lessons that are still relevant uh, to today. So, you know, I was, you know, from an early age, just growing up, was always taught to challenge myself and never settle for anything and really just, you know, be the best you you can be, and that there's nothing you really can't do. You know, when you, when you, when your work ethic, you know, is is on par with the dreams you set. You know, anything is possible. So again, you know, for me, it was more so challenging myself um, in the classroom as well as on the basketball court, like I had always done. And I got to a situation where I got hurt my uh, my sophomore year, year two, and I kind of just wasn't playing basketball, and I decided to kind of load up on classes. And then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, it was my third year, and it's like, man, you can really graduate um, at the end of your third year in college. And, um, you know, just making the most of every opportunity. So, you know, I was able to do that. And then with the injury, you know, it gave me an extra year, a fifth year, to uh, be able to get my master's by the time it's all said and done with. So it's really been a blessing for me. It's really focused on my education altogether, whether it be reading, writing, trying to learn more, uh, always looking ahead to the future. And so, uh, you know, I've always had it in my mind that, you know, I don't want to just get my undergraduate degree, but I want to continue on and get my master's and keep continuing on. Uh, you know, I have dreams of, you know, after basketball is done with professionally or whether I, you know, after all that is done, then, uh, you know, I eventually want to be an attorney. So, you know, get my JD and everything like that. So, you know, I've, I've always valued education from when I was younger. Um, honestly, I think it's going to take, um, you know, it's not a magical answer. You know, there's nothing we, we can't do. It's nothing we haven't done before as a team, as a collective. But what it will take is us, you know, really coming together and really, you know, being one out there as a team from top to bottom. You know, with the five on the floor, the guys on the bench, the coaches, everybody really buying in and just, just having each other's back, you know, making sacrifices and really taking our, our brotherhood to the next level. 
I think a big thing is when you go to postseason and when you know when something's really on the line, whether it's you win this game and you continue on, or you lose this game and you're done, then uh, you start to you start to get real tense. I feel like we have to really take a risk, and I think that if we take risk, uh, good risk, then we can really accomplish what we need to accomplish. Yeah, I definitely want to thank um, Coach Crenshaw. Um, you know, really, honestly, me and him are really one of the few. Con he's really the only constant um, that I've had at IEPY during my five years. You know, I've been here. You know, seemed like forever ago with all the changes that have been made. Um, you know, really, I've, I've been at IEPY almost three eras. You know, with the Hunter era, Coach Howard, then Coach Gardner. But I'm um, really Coach Crenshaw has been been the one constant. You know, from from day one, from my recruiting process to my senior year in high school to now my senior year, fifth year senior uh, here at IEPY. But you know, it's really been been a blessing to see how um, you know just just the culture and everything has changed around here. And uh, you know, I think it's safe to say that us two. Um, especially really appreciate that yeah, a lot more than a lot of other guys because you know this IEPY is not the IEPY that uh, that you know that that, that that I played for um, you know a few years ago. All the coaches are taking chances on me and they do every single day. Uh, you know they really believe in me. Coach Gardner believes in me, and uh, that that'll mean more to me uh, than anything. You know when somebody believes in you or somebody takes a chance on you, uh, you know you can never thank them enough for that.